Ute are the indigenous or Native American people of the Ute tribe and culture among the indigenous peoples of the Great Basin. They had lived in sovereignty in the regions of present-day Utah and Colorado. In addition to their ancestral lands within Colorado and Utah, their historic hunting grounds extended into current-day Wyoming, Oklahoma, Arizona, and New Mexico. The tribe also had sacred grounds outside their home domain that were visited seasonally. There were 11 historic bands of Utes. Although they generally operated in family groups for hunting and gathering, the communities came together for ceremonies and trading. Many Ute bands were culturally influenced by neighboring Native American tribes and Puebloans, with whom they traded regularly. After contact with early European colonists, such as the Spanish, the Ute formed trading relationships. The theft and the acquisition of horses from the Spanish changed their lifestyle dramatically, affecting mobility, hunting practices, and tribal organization. Once primarily defensive warriors, they became more like the Europeans as adept horsemen who used horses to raid other tribes. Certain prestige within the community was based upon a man's horsemanship, tested during horse races, as well as the number of horses a man owned. As the American West began to be settled by white European gold prospectors and colonialists in the mid-1800s, the Utes were increasingly pressured or killed and then eventually forced off their ancestral lands. They entered into treaties with the United States government to preserve their lives and some of their land, but were eventually relocated to the government-created reservations. A few of the key tribal land defensive conflicts during this period include the Walker War when the religious sect of Mormons arrived, 1853, the Black Hawk War where other Native Americans went for treaty but were slaughtered by U.S. forces, 1865-72, and the Meeker Massacre in which the Utes tried to regain control of their lands with warring tactics, 1879. Very few Ute people are left, and they now primarily live in Utah and Colorado, within three Ute tribal reservations, Uinta Ure in northeastern Utah, 3,500 members, Southern Ute in Colorado, 1,500 members, and Ute Mountain, which primarily lies in Colorado, but extends to Utah and New Mexico, 2,000 members. The majority of Ute live on these reservations with limited resources compared to their original lands, although some reside off reservation. Ute people are from the southern subdivision of the Numic speaking branch of the Uto Aztecan language family, which are found almost entirely in the Western United States and Mexico. The name of the language family was created to show that it includes both the Colorado River Numic language, Uto, dialect chain that stretches from southeastern California along the Colorado River to Colorado and the Nahuan languages, Aztecan of Mexico. It is believed that this Numic group originated near the present-day border of Nevada and California, then spread north and east. By about 1,000, there were hunters and gatherers in the Great Basin of Uto Aztecan ethnicity that are believed to have been the ancestors of the indigenous tribes of the Great Basin, including the Ute, Shoshone, Hopi, Paiute, and Shemohuevi peoples. Some ethnologists postulate that the southern Numic speakers, the Uta and southern Paiute, left the Numic homeland first based on language changes and that the central and then the western subgroups spread out toward the east and north sometime later. Shoshone, Goshide, and Comanche are central Numic and northern Paiute and Bannock are western Numic. The southern Numic speaking tribes, the Utes, Shoshone, southern Paiute, and Chemehuevi share many cultural, genetic, and linguistic characteristics. There were ancestral Utes in southwestern Colorado and southeastern Utah by 1300, living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. The Ute occupied much of the present state of Colorado by the 1600s. The Comanches from the north joined them in eastern Colorado in the early 1700s. In the 19th century, the Arapaho and Cheyenne invaded southward into eastern Colorado. The Utes came to inhabit a large area, including most of Utah, western and central Colorado, and south into the San Juan River watershed of New Mexico. Some Ute bands stayed near their home domains, while others ranged further away seasonally. Hunting grounds extended further into Utah and Colorado, as well as into Wyoming, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. Winter camps were established along rivers near the present-day cities of Provo and Fort Duchesne in Utah and Pueblo, Fort Collins, Colorado Springs of Colorado. Aside from their home domain, there were sacred places in present-day Colorado. The Tabaguache Ute's name for Pikes Peak is Tavakiev, 
meaning Sun Mountain. Living a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle, summers were spent in the Pikes Peak area mountains, which was considered by other tribes to be the domain of the Utes. Pikes Peak was a sacred ceremonial area for the band. The mineral springs at Manitou Springs were also sacred. Anute and other tribes came to the area, spent winters there, and shared in the gifts of the waters without worry of conflict. Artifacts found from the nearby Garden of the Gods, such as grinding stones, suggest the groups would gather together after their hunt to complete the tanning of hides and processing of meat. The old Ute Pass Trail went eastward from Monument Creek near Roswell to Garden of the Gods and Manitou Springs to the Rocky Mountains. From Ute Pass, Utes journeyed eastward to hunt buffalo. They spent winters in mountain valleys where they were protected from the weather. The north and middle parks of present-day Colorado were among favored hunting grounds due to the abundance of game. Canon Pintado, or Painted Canyon, is a prehistoric site with rock art from Fremont people, 650 to 1200, and Utes. The Fremont art reflect an interest in agriculture, including corn stalks and use of light at different times of the year to show a planting calendar. Then there are images of figures holding shields, what appear to be battle victims in spears. These were seen by the Dominguez Escalante Expedition, 1776. Utes left images of firearms and horses in the 1800s. The Crooks brand site depicts a horse with a brand from George Crooks Regiment during the Indian Wars of the 1870s. Public lands surrounding the Bears Ears Beauties in southeastern Utah became the Bears Ears National Monument in 2016 in recognition for its ancestral and cultural significance to several Native American tribes, including the Utes. Members of the Ute, Mountain Ute, and Uinta and Array Reservations sit on a five-tribe coalition to help co-manage the monument with the Bureau of Land Management and United States Forest Service. The Ute appeared to have hunted and camped in an ancient ancestral Pueblans and Fremont people campsite in near what is now Arches National Park. At a site near Natural Springs, which may have held spiritual significance, the Ute left petroglyphs in rock along with rock art by the earlier peoples. Some of the images are estimated to be more than 900 years old. The Utes petroglyphs were made after the Utes acquired horses because they show men hunting while on horseback. Culture. The culture of the Utes was influenced by the invasion of neighboring Native American tribes. The Eastern Utes had many traits of Plain Indians and they lived in teepees after the 17th century. The Western Utes were similar to Shoshones and Paiutes and they lived year round in domed willow houses. We Minuches lived in willow houses during the summer. The Jicarilla, Apache, and Puebloans influenced the southeastern Utes. All groups also lived in structures 10-15 feet in diameter that were made of conical pole frames and brush, and sweat lodges were similarly built. Lodging also included hide teepees and ramadas, depending upon the area. People lived in extended family groups of about 20 to 100 people. They traveled to seasonally specific camps, in the spring and summer, family groups hunted and gathered food. The men hunted buffalo, antelope, elk, deer, bear, rabbit, sage hens, and beaver using arrows, spears, and nets. They smoked and sun-dried the meat and also ate it fresh. They also fished in fresh water sources like Utah Lake. Women processed and stored the meat and gathered greens, berries, roots, yampa, pine nuts, yucca, and seeds. The Pavant were the only Utes to cultivate food. Some Western groups ate reptiles and lizards. Some Southeastern groups planted corn and some encouraged the growth of wild tobacco. Implements were made of wood, stone, and bone. Skin bags and baskets were used to carry goods. There is evidence that pottery was made by the Utes as early as the 16th century. Men and women were woven in leather clothing and rabbit skin robes. They wore their hair long or in braids. Parents provided some input, but people decided who they would take as spouses. Men could have multiple wives, and divorce was common and easy. There were restrictions for menstruating women and couples who were pregnant. Children were encouraged to be industrious through several rituals. When someone died, that person was buried in their best clothes with their head facing east. Their possessions were generally destroyed, and their horses either had their hair cut or they were killed. Occasionally, members of Utah bands met up to trade, intermarry, and practice ceremonies, like the annual spring bear dance. Contact with the Spanish. 
The first encounter between the Utes and the Spanish occurred before 1620, perhaps as early as 1581, when they knew about the high-quality deerskin produced by the Utes. They traded with the Spanish in the San Luis Valley beginning in the 1670s, in northern New Mexico beginning in the early 1700s, and in Utah villages in what is now western Colorado and eastern Utah. The Utahs, the main trading partners of the Spanish residents of New Mexico, were known for their soft, high-quality tanned deer skins, or chamoy, and they also traded meat, buffalo robes, and Indian and Spanish captives taken by the Comanche. The Utes traded their goods for cloth, blankets, guns, horses, maize, flour, and ornaments. A number of Ute learned Spanish through trading. The Spanish seriously guarded trade with the Utes, limiting it to annual caravans. But by 1750, they were reliant on the trade with the Utes, their deerskin being a highly sought commodity. The Utes also traded in slaves, women, and children captives from Apache, Comanche, Paiute, and Navajo tribes. In 1637, the Spanish fought with the Utes, 80 of whom were captured and enslaved. Three people escaped with horses. Their lifestyle changed with the acquisition of horses by 1680. They became more mobile, more able to trade, and better able to hunt large game. Ute culture changed dramatically in ways that paralleled the Plains Indian cultures of the Great Plains. They also became involved in the horse and slave trades and respected warriors. Horse ownership and warrior skills developed while riding became the primary status symbol within the tribe and horse racing became common. With greater mobility, there was increased need for political leadership. During this time, few people entered Ute territory. Exceptions to this include the Dominguez Escalante expedition of 1776 and French trappers passing through the area or establishing trading posts beginning in the 1810s. The French expedition recorded meeting members of the Moanons and Pavant bands, contact with other European settlers. The Ute people traded with Europeans by the early 19th century, including at encampments in the San Luis Valley, Wet Mountains, in the Upper Arkansas Valley, and at the annual Rocky Mountain Rendezvous. Native Americans also traded at annual trade fairs in New Mexico, which were also ceremonial and social events lasting up to 10 days or more. They involved the trading of skins, furs, foods, pottery, horses, clothing, and blankets. In Utah, Utes began to be impacted by European-American contact with the 1847 arrival of Mormon settlers. After initial settlement by the Mormons, as they moved south to the Wasatch Front, Utes were pushed off their land. Wars with settlers began about the 1850s, when Ute children were captured in New Mexico and Utah by Anglo-American traders and sold in New Mexico and California. The rush of Euro-American settlers and prospectors into Ute country began with an 1858 gold strike. The Ute allied with the United States and Mexico in its war with the Navajo during the same period. There was continued pressure by the Mormons to push the Utah Utes off their land. This resulted in the Walker War, 1853 to 54. By the mid 1870s, the Utes had been moved onto a reservation, less than 9% of its former land. The Utes found it to be very inhospitable, and they tried to continue hunting and gathering off the reservation. In the meantime, the Black Hawk War, 1865 to 72, occurred in Utah. A reservation was also established in 1868 in Colorado. Indian agents tried to get the Utes to farm, which would be a change in lifestyle and what they believed would lead to certain starvation due to evidence of previous crop failures. Their lands were whittled away until only the modern reservations were left. A large session of land in 1873 transferred the gold-rich San Juan area, which was followed in 1879 by the loss of most of the remaining land after the Meeker Massacre. Utes were later put on a reservation in Utah, Uinta and Orai Indian Reservation, as well as two reservations in Colorado, Ute Mountain Ute Tribe and Southern Ute Indian Reservation. Warrior Culture after the Utes acquired horses, they started to raid other Native American tribes. While their close relatives, the Comanches, moved out from the mountains and became Plains Indians, as did others, including the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Kiowa, and Plains Apache, the Utes remained close to their ancestral homeland. The South and Eastern Utes also raided Native Americans in New Mexico, Southern Paiutes and Western Shoshones, 
capturing women and children and selling them as slaves in exchange for Spanish goods. They fought with Plains Indians, including the Comanche, who had previously been allies. The name Comanche is from the Ute word for them, Kimansi, meaning enemy. The Pawnee, Osage, and Navajo also became enemies of the Plains Indians by about 1840. Some Ute bands fought against the Spanish and Pueblos with a Jicarilla Apache and the Comanche. The Ute were sometimes friendly, but sometimes hostile to the Navajo. The Utes were skilled warriors who specialized in horse-mounted combat. War with neighboring tribes was mostly fought for gaining prestige, stealing horses, and revenge. Men would organize themselves into war parties made up of warriors, medicine men, and a war chief who led the party. To prepare themselves for battle, Ute warriors would often fast, participate in sweat lodge ceremonies, and paint their faces and horses for special symbolic meanings. The Utes were master horsemen and could execute daring maneuvers on horseback while in battle. Most Plains Indians had warrior societies, but the Ute generally did not. The Southern Utes developed such societies late and soon lost them in reservation life. Warriors were exclusively men, but women often followed behind war parties to help gather loot and sing songs. Women also performed the lame dance to symbolize having to pull or carry heavy loads of loot after a raid. The Utes used a variety of weapons, including bows, spears, and buffalo skin shields, as well as rifles, shotguns, and pistols, which were obtained through raiding or trading. 